Hi everyone! Kamusta kayo? So I thought it was a good time to go on live again. Kasi <laughs> medyo kailangan ko ng support group. I've been monitoring the, the filing of certificates of candidacy. And more and more relatives are filing certificates of candidacy together. It is a fundamental Alam mo yun, parang good manners, right conduct, na avoid nepotism, punta lahat sa isang trabaho na there's going to be conflict of interest, all of that. Pero apparently, it's not that obvious to a lot of people kasi ang dami ngang gusto mag-file ng candidacies na relatives. And I also mentioned on X nga, eh, on Twitter, hindi ako masaya na ang dami kong family trees na gagawin ngayon dahil ang daming mga nagpa-file na certificates of candidacy as families. Now, nung last elections, I created a map of all of the political families that were voted into certain positions. So I had one for the Senate. I had one for the Cabinet of 2022 and also of Congress of 2022. So I guess for this round, it would be nice if the community can also help. So I've been reading this book. It's called The Philippine Genealogy and Religious and Heart Art History by Luciano Santiago. The thing about Luciano Santiago, he was a doctor. He was a psychiatrist. Pero he was a genealogist and he was a historian. And one of the things that he did during his lifetime was he actually went to the archives in Spain and looked for records about the Philippines. And in the er earliest, like we're talking 1500s, uh, 1600s, diba before that parang medyo monarchy type na the leadership position is given to the, the child. Even without the lacans, and ginawa na rin ng mga Spanish yon with the encomienda system. So the encomenderos, when they get that grant to have an encomienda, so an encomienda, by the way, is not land. An encomienda is number of people or number of families. They have to take care of the people that they collect taxes from. So they take care of them in all aspects, their health, their livelihood, uh, their spiritual uh, growth. Uh, so even then, the encomienda can pass on to your grandchild. Fast forward na, 1800s, 1900s, yung mga political families, they flourish. Pinapagpasapasahan yung titles among family members. Now, in the 1986 Constitution, meron po tayong nakalagay, I think it's section 26, na bawal ang political dynasty. The lawmakers were tasked to create specific laws to make sure that we stop political dynasties. Pero, hindi nangyari. And bakit? Kasi it was never a priority for the lawmakers kasi masasagasaan sila. Imagine of our presidents since the 1970s. So, sabihin na natin, umpisa natin kay Marcos. Ang hindi lang nagkaroon ng dynasty, I would say, is... Fidel Ramos. Lahat ng iba. Yung mga anak nila, mga pamangkin nila, whatever. Mas ka mag-anak nila. Wala nang isabay na pagsaserve. With andalas kong marinig ngayon, yung oh, let the people decide. Hindi kami dynasty. Kasi binoboto kami ng tao. Here's the thing. Kapag buong pamilya kayo na nasa posisyon for decades and you continue to be voted into certain positions, I think that is artificial choice. You're not really giving people another choice. You are not training, for example, the next generation of leaders para umangat doon sa position nyo. Kasi ang inaayin nyo lang, yung kamag-anak nyo. I in, in any leadership role, halimbawa nasa corporate ka, meron kami, at, at least when I was in corporate, meron kaming succession planning. Sino ba yung susunod na magiging manager dito sa ating mga youngsters in the company? Ganon! Hindi mo pipiliin yung kamag-anak mo when you're working in a company. So, bakit naging okay sa, di ba, sa gobyerno? 
Nagatanong, what are we doing po? We're talking about dynasties. We had conversations earlier on how, uh, at least how I've read it, para the early beginnings of dynasties. Kasi hindi naman tayo monarchy, di ba? Paano na uso yung na inherit yung uh, title? And this is rooted in the encomienda system. Encomienda is not a land grant, but a grant for the management of families. Like when you say, my encomienda has 300 tributes, it means you are taking care of 300 families. So parang maliit na, na administration. Binibigay nung Spanish government, o oh, iyan, yan ang iyong encomienda, alagaan mo sila, o sila, kukuhana mo sila ng, ng taxes. Merong mga surnames na hindi masyadong familiar sa akin. So perhaps it's because they're in the local area and they don't need to be nationally known names for them to be political dynasties. A lot of them are also staying local because all of their interests are local. Sabi nila, people are, are voting for these politicians and we are kind of forced to ignore the, the conflict of interest. I know that there are issues now coming out Now, because the mayor, the vice mayor, and some people in the town council are from the same family, the family was given millions in tax reprieve. So, hindi sila pinagbabayad ng tax. We really have to do better. We get what we deserve kasi wala na daw ibang choice. Yun nga eh, conversation, no? walang ibang choice, or yun yung gusto ng tao, ayaw nila iba. Hindi, kasi nga hindi na de-develop yung susunod na generation of leaders. Dapat umpisa pa lang, as soon as you sit down, you should already be thinking of your replacement. In corporate, that's how we operate. You're meant to move on to another role. Hindi ka naman magsa-stay in your role forever when you're in corporate, di ba? You have a business continuity plan in place, or you have a succession plan in place. Mukhang wishful thinking na lang na mawala ang family dynasty sa politics. Yeah, I agree with you. So, I am just hoping that we make it an issue as people who are voting so that we make them aware. And if they win, they have to do more. What do we consider a dynasty? Like A dynasty is when you have relatives occupying different posts at the same time, which is different from having a political heritage or a political legacy na you have ancestors in your past that occupy different positions. Example, si Chel Diokno. Si Chel Diokno comes from a line of public servants. Papa niya, lolo niya, tatay ng lolo niya. Lahat sila nag-serve serve sa bayan in some shape, way, or form. Pero hindi sila nagsasabay-sabay in public service. Merong mga nagtatanong ng opinions ko on certain personalities. L let's put it this way. I don't have to like everyone. I think what is important moving forward is we have to watch out that they are doing their job and we remember when they don't. I am really distressed na people with showbiz backgrounds, and I'm sure they will win, they would come in with zero preparation and say that I want to run for office. We would benefit from their participation if they were prepared for that office. I am just hoping, since sila nga yung may popularidad, I hope they hire a chief of staff that's really good. Daming artista on the list, ma'am. I have nothing against artistas. I have friends who are artistas. Pero dapat, pag-prepare naman kayo. Hindi pwedeng ang ganda lang ang baon. What I don't like is yung mga OJT. Pupunta sila sa Kongreso, sa Senado. Tapos quiet lang sila kasi mag-aaral pa daw sila. No, what the I'm not saying that you're going to hit the ground running, pero dapat marunong ka na ba nagbuwa ng batas? I actually do a lot of work with Congress. We were pushing for the National Autism Care Plan Bill. And that meant back-reading lahat ng mga batas kung ano yung mga benefits na binibigay sa mga taong may kapansanan. And we were shocked. Kasi we came prepared din. Eh. Nag-aral kami, nag-review, as in. Binasa ko lahat ng mga PDF na yun. Yung ibang mga congressman, ang dami nilang mga fina-file na, na bills without knowing the institutional history. Na parang may batas na ho yan. Kasi nga hindi sila nag-prepare, hindi sila nag-aral. So, I'm not saying they have to be lawyers, pero kailangan magbasa kayo. Bakit po maraming social media artists na kumakadidato ngayon kahit na walang mga background? I agree. <laughs> I think yung pagsali nila sa, sa politics, not because of their popularity on social media, but because they were interested in politics to begin with. 
Hello Tito Mona, do you support Donald Trump? Hindi ko naman kung kailangan siya i-support dahil hindi naman ako boboto doon eh. Pero ayoko yung idea na mga kriminal ay nag aspire for higher positions. Tapos parang dinedeny or tis sinasabi nila na I was forgiven. Kaya it doesn't exist anymore. Ha? Charot. Tsaka yung mga may kaso, Diyos ko, oo nga, the audacity. Tama ka, Z. One of the things then that happened many years ago in the 70s, because the Marcoses were you know, all over the place, they were all over government, they named streets and schools and roads and places, barangays, cities, after their family members. Doña Remedios Trinidad is the mother of Imelda. And naging bayan na siya. Even if she did not accomplish anything. I don't even think she was from that place. Okay. Bakit po read and write lang ang requirements sa executive and legislative branches of Philippine government? I am not a lawyer. I think it is because our constitution wants to give opportunities to as many people as possible. If you rose from the masses, you have the heart for it. Sana lang, meron ka rin uh, preparasyon para sa higher office. Yung read and write, it is supposed to be a clause that makes it inclusive for the privileged and those who are not privileged to aspire for office. Transparency of expenses, iwas kurakot. Alam mo, Miss Amor, nasa batas yan eh. Transparency should be part of the conversation. Hindi ka dapat ma-offend kung ino-audit ka. Hindi ka ma-offend kung magkatanong sila ng questions. Ang problema lang kasi natin, nagtatanong lang tayo kapag hindi natin type yung tinatanong. So, I wish na we could do this for everyone. Everyone who is not liquidating, everyone who is not spending their budget correctly, dapat gawa ng inquiry across the board. I was reading a study a couple of days ago. Why do people vote for certain personalities? It's not because they are learned dahil magaling sila professionally na may history of public service sila. Hindi nga importante kung kriminal o hindi eh. Hindi importante kung nagnakaw. Hindi. Ang importante is a perception na mabait sila at mukha silang malalapitan. Napakasakit kung ganon. And I think it is really up to us ngayon to elevate the conversation. Ah, during the sauna, I had this post. Sana, meron tayong rubric. Personal rubric ba? Ano ba yung importante sa akin? Pag it is looking at the accomplishments and matching it to what you find important. So, ganun na rin kapag eleksyon, di ba? Dapat before you even start looking at the candidates, ngayon pa lang, nag-iisip na kayo, ano ba yung gusto ninyo sa kandidato? Have that list, those qualities that we are looking for. Ano ba yung issues na importante sa sa'yo? Importante ba yung Pogo issue? Importante ba yung West Philippine Sea issue? You have to look not just at what they are saying during elections, kasi madaling magsalita during elections, especially for those who have served. Look at their voting history. Paano po malalaman ang tamang tao ang boboto natin? Gawa po kayo ng rubric, gawa po kayo ng listahan kung anong importante sa'yo. Study the candidates, their past, uh, voting history, work history, service history. If they were already in their positions, better. Kasi you will have a feel for how they are kapag hindi na sila naghahanap ng boto. Look at what's important to you and match them. What do you want to do for the community? Di pa dapat, kahit wala kang public office, gagawin mo na. Dapat nasa DNA mo na, at yun talaga yung gusto mong gawin. And there are so many people who already do that. Those who serve in NGOs, those who you know, serve their communities just because they, they want to live in a better community. In my case po, more than 10 years na po akong nagsaserve sa Autism Society Philippines kasi my eldest son is on the autism spectrum. And early on, parang I already dream of serving the community. Kaya, I did that. Hindi ko naman kailangan maging public servant para tumulong. Nagvo-volunteer po ako sa Autism Society Philippines. Nagvo-volunteer ako sa National Council on Disability Affairs. Kasi nga, I already made my decision na I will help the disability community. Tapos ngayon po, with my presence on TikTok, on social media, I am able to help the education sector. Na there are just so many ways to help. Of course, there's no money in it. Like, hindi kaya yaman from volunteer work. And service doesn't mean charity. Kasi ganun yung ano natin minsan eh, na parang it's patronage politics, malalapitan, mahihinga ng ayuda, which has to change. It means that we have to elevate from that transactional relationship with the politicians. 
Well, what's your take, sabi ni Robin Dude, on constitutional reform? My question is, what are you reforming? It is something that people talk about, like, oh, we need to change our, our constitution so that we can get more investments. So, like, how? Don't, don't we have mechanisms in place to do that now? Didn't we just create the Maharlika Fund to get more investments in the Philippines? So what about the constitution should we reform? That's, that's a question I will ask to anyone who asks me that question. Have there been descendants of Carlos P. Garcia who tried to enter politics? If I remember right, his wife tried to enter politics but she lost. After that, wala na. Are you against or pro-provincial rate? I have a background in business and in economics. So yung provincial and local rates is based on the standards of living. So, kaya po nagkakaroon ng difference nun is dahil ang presyo sa cities is more expensive than presyo sa probinsya. So that's why that rate is the way it is. However, what I would dream for the country is for us to have a more equitable distribution of businesses, more equitable division of populations, yayaman ng isang bayan dahil sa negosyo, dahil sa mga tao na nagko-contribute sa taxes niya. So kapag nagde-develop ang isang area, then yung sinasabi mong provincial rate versus city rate won't really matter. For example, Australia. Ang Australia, with the exception of the outbacks, it doesn't matter where you are, the standard of living is, is the same. So yun lang po yun. I have several uh, videos on how to create your family tree. When you start, go back one generation at a time. Make sure the names are right, the places are right, the dates are right. Para pag clear proof kayo na tama yung relationship dun sa next. Kasi kapag rinarush nyo masyado, pinipilit nila mahanap yung connection to a famous person, yung mga magkakapareho ng names, mini-mix up na nila. So be dutiful about going back one generation at a time. Thank you very much for, for thinking that I contribute to your knowledge of history. I am also a student of history. I read a lot and I like to talk to historians who have done their research. And it's nice that I am able to share that love for our past. As we go on this journey, moving forward to election, sana nga po, we all get more choosy. We all get to try to talk to others, not to tell them who to vote for. But I do want to give people the inspiration na magkaroon naman kayo ng standards, di ba? Para pag boto natin, we make that choice na importante tayo, importante yung buhay natin, importante yung buhay ng mga anak natin, ganon. But they deserve better. If we we're going to do this, we have to inspire others to do the same. I'm going to do another live siguro next week and let's dive into it a little bit more. I also crowdsource all of the political dynasties on my Facebook page so you can go there if you want to add more. Meow meow.